Visit SayRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, Eric Grant from SayRight. In this video series, we're going to show you how to redo an entire power boat. The upholstery, the flooring, the side panels, and more, including this motor cover, and make a used power boat look brand new. It's true, you can buy a used power boat and save thousands compared to buying a new one, and you can make the entire thing look brand new, just like we did in these videos. In this tutorial, we'll be showing how to recover the seat cushion. It includes a curved knee riser in the front, boxing around the sides, and is stapled to a backer board. Let's get started. Hi, Eric Grant here today. We're gonna to show you how to reupholster this cushion. This cushion has a curved fabric pole with a higher foam in the front and a slightly lower foam in the rear as far as thickness goes. This uh, cushion has a boxing, which is the side, that is sewn all the way around the perimeter of it and then it's stapled to the underside. And we're gonna first uh, have to take it apart, but as you can see, this cushion is in terrible shape. The previous owner actually used tape to hold the seams together, so it needs to be replaced. And we're going to inspect the foam and see if it needs replaced too. First thing to do is take it apart. We're going to remove the old fabric and then evaluate the foam. Okay, on the back side, we'll just have to remove the staples. This is a Hydem GIMP. Um, it's usually used when you uh, to, to hide the, the vinyl. So it's a more of a decorative thing. That comes off and then we just need to remove the old vinyl. Now it looks to me like, yep, if you notice this when we're taking it apart, this was a galvanized staple and it, it was put in a power boat, which is really crazy. Then these staples on top were stainless steel and they actually lasted. So make sure you use stainless steel staples. These have deteriorated and are actually dangerous. Okay, we have enough staples removed that we can start separating the old vinyl fabric, which is stiff as a board now. And we can start inspecting the foam. Now we still have to clean up the staples on the back side, but I'm anxious to see what the foam looks like. There's our fabric pole, and it's almost intact. It goes between the two layers of foam. It is not uncommon for this uh, foam to be glued when there's a fabric pole. This one's actually, but you can peel it up. Now, I'm contemplating replacing the foam. And one of the main reasons I'm probably gonna do it is because back here in the corner where the vinyl was pulled down, this is actually compressed a lot more than the rest of the cushion. So when I put new vinyl on, it'll even compress more. And we do have a lot of black mold that's in it. So I think I'm gonna replace the foam to duplicate the fabric pole before I remove the staples there's already a black line from a previous upholstery job but there are spots where the black line's gone so what I want to do is I want to mark it either with a, a black marker or a white depending on what your backer board is so that I know exactly where that fabric pole is going to be again then I remove the staples we'll be creating a pattern here and cutting our foam to size in this chapter Though this foam is compressed, we can still get a measurement of how thick the foam was. And it looks like this one's two and a half inches, it was probably close to three. And then this one is three inches. So I'm gonna use a three inch foam for this piece. And I'm gonna use a two inch foam for this with a sew foam glued to it so that it's about two and a half inches when we're done. Okay, usually what I do is I take this uh, backer board and then I trace around it on the foam to get the size. But since we have a curve in this, it's probably better to get a pattern from it so that we can make sure that the curve is consistent between the two layers of foam. So I'm using super ADA adhesive and this is just to make it a little bit tacky so that I can take Durascrim pattern material and lay it on top. and smooth it down flat. Nice. 
So this is our curve, and I'm just going to write that or transfer that to the Duraskrim pattern material. We're going to mark this out and out, and I'm going to put a transfer mark at a few spots, like here, and we usually go perpendicular to the line as much as possible. And here, we'll call this A and A and B and B. Now we're going to trace around the outside. Now I'm probably going to go wider than this. So I don't want my foam to fall exactly on this black line. I want it to be about a quarter inch outside of this so that the, that the board isn't, isn't visible. But we'll do that after we get this all traced and cut out. Now we can take this off, move this out, and cut this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it a quarter inch larger outside the perimeter here. And I'm not going to measure. If you feel like measuring to make sure that you're completely accurate, you can do so. But we're going to go a quarter inch larger than the cutout, or than the markings. Now we're going to cut uh, on the, uh, the part where the uh, two separate pieces of foam are for the fabric pull. Okay, this is our cushion right foam, and I'm going to use the Super 88 spray adhesive, and we are going to uh, stick this pattern material to it so that it doesn't move around on us. So just a little bit of spray glue. Outside surface is facing up, and we position this, and this will keep it from moving as we cut it out. Make sure it lays flat. Now we can just take a foam saw with our pattern still stuck in place and cut along the outer edge. Before we remove the pattern, let's uh, put our matchup marks on this and we'll put A and B. This is my two inch cushion right foam and uh, this fits, so we confirmed that. This is my half inch sew foam and usually when I'm not sewing through the uh, fabric backing, I put the foam side up. So I'm going to glue on the fabric uh, back of this. So I'm going to cut a size to the general size of my foam. Okay, you can use foam lock adhesive. We're going to use this headliner adhesive and glue the sew foam to this uh, uh, foam and you want to coat both surfaces. You can touch the glue with your knuckles and if it doesn't transfer it's tacky enough to be bonded. So we're going to just bond this to it making sure that it's slightly oversized and smooth it out. This time we're going to use the Super 88, 88, not the headliner adhesive, to again secure the Duraskrim. And this you can put down immediately. So make sure that your uh, pattern is everywhere that there's foam on the underside because the, the um, sew foam is a little bit big. We can mark A, we can mark B in the same manner. Okay, so we have about a half inch rise, and that's, uh, that's pretty good there. Look, it fits nicely. In this chapter, we're going to cut our top plates to size. They'll be slightly oversized because of the shape of the two panels that must be joined together. So this is our cushions pattern, and it has a knee rise. This part is higher than this part. This will be tan and this will be black and it's going to be sewn together with piping. Now, adding seam allowance and considering that it has a shape to the middle instead of just a straight line does wacky things. So we're going to be taking up a half inch on each panel for seam allowance to sew these two colors together. So what we have to do is we have to add a half inch seam allowance here and a half inch seam allowance here 
but we also have to cut the panels oversize by a couple inches all around the perimeter. And once they're sewn together, then we'll lay our foam on top and retrace around it and cut it to the actual pattern size. We're using an Eversoft indoor-outdoor vinyl fabric that's exclusively sold at Serite. It's a four-way stretch vinyl available in a broad array of colors. The surface of Eversoft is phenomenal with a good feel and on the back side is 100% tricot polyester material that's excellent for strength and also for gluing applications. Again, Eversoft is available exclusively at Sailrite. This is our black vinyl, so I'm going to start with the black piece and it says out here. So this needs to be facing the wrong direction because obviously this is the right side. So make sure you put it on correctly, otherwise your, everything is going to be a mess. And it looks like it's going to fit in here. So notice I have uh, a couple inches here and I'll cut it out a couple inches here and I have enough for seam allowance here. So I'm going to take my super ADA adhesive. And I'm going to spray this so that I can apply this and put it in that general position again. So I have plenty of fabric. And then that will hold it down in place. Pretty nice stuff. Okay. So this is where the uh, two panels are sewn together, the tan with this black. So I need to add a half inch seam allowance. And what I typically do is I just do this by sight. So this is approximately a half inch and I just follow it down. Now, if you'd like to measure, you can, but as long as you're fairly accurate, you can do this by sight. So that's my extra half inch for sewing it together. And here on the outside, I'm gonna leave at least two inches all around here and that way when it shrinks up we can actually put the foam on top and trace it to size. Before you take your panel off mark it where the for us the A and the B are and I'm actually going to take my notchers you can take scissors and do this too and I'm going to notch it at that location then I'll put an A at that location and a B at this location B, and obviously A. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the tan panel, making sure the outside surface is up, and I'm going to add the half inch to where it's sewn together and then leave excess around the side. We're not going to show that. Next, we'll create our fabric pole and sew it to one of the halves of the top plate. So now we're going to measure the fabric pole, and I like to have a little bit extra by two inches, and I'm going to take a soft tape measure and follow this contoured edge, because this is where the fabric pole goes. Usually the fabric pole is one inch wider than your smallest thickness of foam. Our thickness, smallest thickness is two and a half inches, so I will cut the fabric pole to three and a half inches in width, and I'm going to go 55 inches. Okay, I'm using the clear acrylic ruler, and this is three and a half inches. I'm going to uh, mark out 55 inches of it. I've cut this strip out and I'm going to put a line a half inch from the edge with my clear acrylic ruler on both of the same sides because I don't know exactly which side is going to be the side that is stapled down. This will help us in stapling it down accurately. So we're going to do this all along its length on both sides on one side. And this is the fabric pole that we just cut. This is the line that's a half inch that's struck on both sides. We want that to be away from the edge of the fabric. So I'm just going to start here and I'm going to sew it onto this edge, which is the fabric pole edge. We want to sew this fabric pole on not at a half inch, but at a quarter inch. So I'm going to put that right beside this presser foot. That's a quarter inch from the needle. And I'm going to just start sewing with a little bit of excess over the edge. And all I want to do is line up the edge. I don't want it to be more than a quarter inch because I don't want this stitch to show up when I sew it, the piping together. So here we go. No reason to do any reversing. Just make sure the edges are lined up and sew all the way to the other side. 
The reason we don't have to do any reversing is because when we sew the piping, that will actually secure this for a second time. So just notice that I, I'm just kind of moving it so that it's lined up as we sew. These matchup marks, we're gonna transfer so we can see them through the uh, fabric pole. In this chapter, we're gonna be cutting the boxing to size, and we'll also be joining two halves of a boxing together to save on fabric usage. We're gonna measure around the perimeter. I'll just start here where the foam is, and I, I wanna just follow this all the way around to know the length of boxing that we need to cut. And we wanna cut it oversized by about six to eight inches, just to make sure we have plenty. So I'm trying to find the thickest part of the boxing, and it looks like it's here. And this is, I don't know if you can see that, but it's about four and a half inches. Now I definitely want to cut more because this is cut very uh, crudely here, uh, right where the staples are. So four and a half inches, five inches, six, I think I'm going to actually go seven inches. I'll have plenty that way. And uh, we measured our strip and needed 138 inches in length. To save on fabric, we'll cut two strips, both to 69 inches in length by seven inches. We will not show cutting it to size. Okay, these are perfect 90 degree corners um, because I have to uh, sew two halves together to save on fabric. So I'm gonna use a quarter inch basting tape for canvas and upholstery. And that way I can uh, put this one on outside surfaces would face each other so that it's perfectly straight. This boxing will have an extra seam. If you don't want that, cut it to full length instead. And then we're going to sew a half inch here. And then we're going to do a French seam because this is going to be visible. And on the back side of the French seam, I'm going to use this polyester uh, carpet binding uh, to reinforce the stitches on the outside of the French seam. We're going to put the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide to the half inch. And we are simply going to sew um, down here at the half inch, doing a little bit of reversing at the beginning and the end. Okay, what I do is I splay these apart, and you don't have to do this, but I find it just so much easier. I put the double side tape on it, um, and then I'm going to peel off the transfer paper, and then I'm going to stick my scrim, which strengthens the seam, and it's going to make it look good. Uh, right on top of the double-sided tape. Now this doesn't have to go on straight because nobody's going to see this, but you do have to have it on to the point where it's going to be sewn through. So splay it out. If it sticks to each other, make sure that you unstick it. There we go. So that will reinforce the seam. Now we're going to take off the magnetic guide and get ready for sewing. All right, so now I'm going to use the foot as my guide and I'm going to put a stitch on both uh, sides. I'm going to just put the stitch right, split that center foot there. And uh, I'm not going to do any reversing here, mainly because it's going to be sewing into a seam. So I'm going to sew on this side. And I am sewing a six millimeter straight stitch. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this around. So I'm sewing on the same side of that foot as my guide, and we're gonna sew on this side in the same manner. If I can get this stuff out of the way, there we go. Make sure it's not folded in there. There we go. So the fabric on the underside just reinforces this. We're going to cut this flush and on the top side you get a beautiful French seam. We're going to turn our attention back to the top plate and sew the two halves together with that fabric pole and piping. Now it doesn't matter if you sew the fabric pole onto the tan or the black fabric, just the opposite fabric I'm going to sew the piping onto and I'm just following the general shape so I can cut it to the general size, obviously oversized slightly. So we can take this black panel over and we're going to sew this to this edge. So I'm going to start here just leaving about an inch over the edge and I'm not going to do any reversing because this is basically just tacking it in place. And I've got my cording foot a quarter inch for the fabricator on the sewing machine. So I'm just going to make sure this flanged edge is matched up with the edge of the fabric as I sew around. And we'll sew this on this edge completely and then show you what's next. 
Now that the piping is sewing on, we need to find the matchup marks. Here's A, and we're going to do the same thing to B, and we're just going to transfer that through the piping so we can see it on that side as well. This is A, this is A, and B is over here. We're going to match up A so outside surfaces are facing each other, and we will start sewing right at A. We're not going to be concerned about the ends. Remember, we cut it oversized, so we're going to start sewing here. Since each one of those panels are cut oversized, the ends will not match up perfectly yet. That's why we start at a matchup mark and sew there first. So I put them directly on top of each other, like that and then make sure the edges are lined up. I still have my cording foot on and we'll start sewing at this juncture. I'm not going to do any reversing here. We're going to make sure the edges are lined up as we sew and follow that shape. Now here, there's, here's a curve coming on and, and I just want to show you that I'm just going to keep concentrating on matching up the edge as we sew. Okay, so when we're sewing these together, we need to make sure that uh, we don't have a wrinkle in the uh, uh, fabric pole. So just make sure of that. All right, we sewed all the way down to that end and I'm just cutting this, these trailer threads off. So I'm, I'm gonna flip this now because we started at B and then we're just gonna sew from the other side uh, and sew a little bit on top of our previous stitches. We wanna be right on top of them because if you aren't, they're gonna be visible. And we'll uh, sew in this direction now. Um, so I'm right on top of those previous stitches. Match it up, sew to the other end. Now that our top plate is sewn together, we can trim it to the appropriate size. Remember, we made it slightly oversized. Now because this is a compound curve, we matched up A. And then by the time we got down to B, it was slightly off. B is right here and here's our mark over here. Uh, so it was off by a, about a half inch. Don't let that alarm you. Now, this is oversized, so we have it so the outside surface is facing the tabletop. We're gonna take our foam now, this is the outside surface of the foam, the A and the A match up, and place it on top and butt it up to that uh, location so that it follows this curve. And then we're gonna take this and we're going to do the same thing. Our fabric pole is going between the two and you can see that the foam is butted up here and we have our fabric nice and flat. Now, this oversize, we can trim around the foam. I'm going to straighten that out. There's a little bit of rough cutting from my uh, foam saw, but it won't cause any problems at all. We can trace around the foam, equaling the size of the foam and make sure that the foam is pushed together when you do this. Um, all around the perimeter and we can trim it to size. So push the foam together well because that's what, how it's going to be and mark. Now we can remove the foam and we have a pattern that matches up perfectly. So we're going to cut on this outside line. At this juncture I'm sure you're asking what about adding seam allowance because we're going to be sewing the boxing to this top plate. That seam allowance will take a half inch of the top plate away, so the cover will be smaller than the foam and it will compress it nicely for a nice fitting tight cover. Now it's time to sew the boxing to the top plate. It's difficult to tell where the exact center of the front is for this seam for the boxing, so I'm just going to put it here. Since it doesn't really matter where this goes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk it around so that I don't have to flip it when I take it to the sewing machine. So I'm basically just walking around the perimeter and we'll find out where we want to start sewing at the back side of the cushion. Come around this side. Now I do want to leave a few extra inches because I want to be able to join it together in the middle. So I'm going to leave about that much unsewn. So we're going to start right here. 
We want to sew a half inch from the edge, so I'm going to put the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide on the half inch of the needle plate of the Serrat Fabricator sewing machine. We're going to start sewing here, and I'm not going to do any reversing, because the reversing will likely show up. We're going to sew all the around the perimeter, making sure that the edges are lined up. We're going to show one curve only. Now when I get to the piping, uh, I have to walk over this bump and I'm going to have to help the machine do that probably by lifting the uh, foot and walking over it because it's a pretty big bump. So here's the piping. You can decide which way you want this tail to go by pulling on this and you can see that it's going to want to go that way. So I'm going to cut out this tail. I don't want to sew it. I'm going to cut about an inch and then that way I can fold this back. But I want this flange to go this direction. So I'm laying it forward. Now here the machine's walking over the uh, piping and actually it's doing a pretty good job right now. But when it gets to the back it's going to get stuck. So it's stuck right there. I'm going to roll the balance wheel around so the needle's out and then I'm going to lift my presser foot and I'm going to pull the fabric through one stitch basically by moving it approximately one stitch and now we're over that piping. So let's go ahead and round this corner right here. It's a rounded corner so it's not too difficult. There we go. Okay, we're going to continue to sew around in this manner. Okay, we're coming to the other fabric pole. Again, I'm going to cut about an inch so that I can fold the fabric pole back. And then I want the tail to go in towards the black panel because that's what I did on the other side. So the tail, I mean the seam allowance here. So it's going to fold this way, not this way. And then fold this out of the way so we don't sew through that fabric pole. And the same process. If you do accidentally sew through your fabric pole, don't worry about it. All you'll do is just cut the fabric pole where you sewed. We didn't uh, sew through it, but if you do, don't panic. So I'm coming around to where we need to join these two halves together. And there is really no back side of the cushion. So I, I'm going to start stop sewing right about here so I can join them. No reversing take it out and let's take it to the table. Obviously there is a backside to the cushion. It's just hard to determine where the exact middle is because of the shape of this cushion. That's what I'm referring to. Okay, we're gonna have it uh, stop right about here and I'll fold this one up to that point too. So this is where it's gonna be sewn together. So I'm gonna just gonna take a, uh, my pencil and mark those, that location. So there's the mark. I'm going to go outside of that a half inch for seam allowance and make sure that it's straight with this uh, clear, clear acrylic ruler mark there. That's our cut line on that one. And then we do the same thing on this one, making sure that it's straight. We mark a half inch and we strike a line and we cut off the excess of both of these. Our marks are directly on top of each other. So now I like to use the double sided tape. I'm going to put it on one of these, doesn't matter which end, and then peel off the basting tape. Now I'm not going to do a French seam here. This is the back side of the cushion. So all I'm going to do is just butt these up to each other, outside surfaces are facing each other, and we're going to do a single stitch, not even a top stitch, I don't believe, because again, nobody's going to see this right down here, reversing at the beginning and the end. If you'd like to make this a semi-flat felt seam or a French seam, you can. On the old cushion, they didn't even sew the two halves together. So since it's not going to be seen, it's your choice. You can do whatever you since like. Since it's basted together, I don't have to worry about it. All I have to do is sew a half inch from that edge. Do some reversing. Okay. So now we want to put it back in the sewing machine and we want to sew right on top of those previous stitches so we don't see this and I'm sewing about two inches back of those stitches and do no reversing. We can lay this flat or you can open it up. Remember we have double sided tape but I'm just going to open it up that'll make it a little bit 
less pronounced. And I'm going to leave the double side tape there anyway. It's not going to cause any problems. And because we did that, we should have exactly the right length of boxing. We're going to sew about two inches into these previous stitches, sew off into the flange a little bit just to secure it, and we are done. Flange meaning seam allowance. Okay, this is the back of our cushion, and I have my edge guide foot on so we can do a top stitch. And I'm going to put the seam allowance uh, into the boxing, so off to the right here. And I like to start at the back of the cushion because I can just uh, run over my previous stitches. So just make sure that your seam allowance is on the right side. The nice thing about this foot is that you can basically uh, just use it as a guide and sew across your, uh, your fabric and you don't have to be concerned about it just yet. You just have to make sure that your seam allowance is going the right direction. So I'm sewing a six millimeter and I'm spreading the panels apart left and right as we sew. And we're going to do this all around the perimeter, checking every once in a while to make sure that our seam allowance is going the right direction. So we're getting ready to go over that uh, piping and this is a little bit of a bump, and I do like to sew through my piping. Some people like to cut it short, but I like to make sure that the piping is secured. So again, I might have to help it over this. We'll find out here in a second. Yeah, oh, it actually went right over it. Perfect. Now we're getting to a corner. We'll show one corner. Let's show this corner. So I want to just spread this corner out, make sure my tail's going the right way or my seam allowance. And if you can only sew an inch at a time, don't worry about that. That's not a big deal. It's common when you have shape like this to be able to hardly see what you're doing too. But you want to pull it left and right and keep it lined up to the best of your ability. Okay, we're around that corner. We're coming to a straightaway and I think you get the general idea. Once sewing is complete, it's time to staple the fabric pole to the backer board. This is the backer board. I'm going to put the foam on it, and uh, we have a little bit extra on the ends like we designed it for. And I'm going to transfer the A to here, and the B coming straight down to here. Why do I do that? Well, because this is a curve, and it's hard to know exactly where this goes. So if I take the B here, it's uh, in this general area, and if I take the A here, it's right here, from there to here. You need to determine whether it's easier to staple it on like this, or like this. And I think I think it's easier this way. Yeah. Okay, so here's our seam. This is our boxing. And there, we want the seam to fall right here. So technically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this black line on top of this line here. And we will secure it in place there. And that positions that seam. So, sorry for my hands being in the way. I'm going to staple right on black line and notice that it's on the black line on the board over here and let's just uh, put one more in here following the, the line and then let's go to the other side and do the same thing. Now unfortunately I didn't pull this fabric pull back when I did the top stitch but that's easy to resolve. All I did is just cut it with scissors because the fabric pull nobody's going to see. So here this seams at the edge right here. We're going to put a couple staples here and right on top of that black line. And then I'm just going to continue going this direction and we'll stop at the middle and we'll start at the other end at the middle and hopefully uh, the fabric doesn't have any wrinkles in it. If it does, at least it's in the middle and we know that the sides are exactly where they need to be following that uh, shape. So basically I'm, I'm just trying to get this lined up right on the black line as best as possible. Notice that we're stapling about five inches apart just to get the appropriate position. Later we'll come back and we'll staple closer together. 
So I think I'm happy with that. Now I need to drive staples about every inch away uh, on this entire length. So there's our fabric pole. We've got staples about every inch or so all the way down. We are ready for the foam. And finally, it's time to pull the cover over the foam and staple it to the backer board. This is our headliner adhesive. I'm going to spray a little bit on this foam to secure it in place and then a little bit on the backer board so it doesn't move around on us much. I'm not going to put it all along the surface. I'm just going to try to get it more centered. I'm going to get this foam against me. So now I'm going to do the backer board at that location. Okay, the glue is now tacky and it's ready to be adhered. And this should go over the edge a little bit, like it is. You want to push it in position. You have some time to work with it. And it should be right up against your staples on the backer board. So the staples are right in line with it. You can't see it, but I can. Okay, this is silk film and it helps to prevent water from getting to the foam, but it also makes it really easy to uh, get the vinyl to, take, to go over the foam and slip easily. So I'm just going to shove it in here. Now we don't have any on the bottom side because we actually want it to breathe a little bit on the bottom. There are holes underneath the backer board and then we'll wrap it around this. So I think I'm going to work on this corner first. I haven't got it stapled anywhere. I'm just trying to get that any kind of wrinkle out of it. And remember, this is kind of a separate cushion from this. We don't even have the foam in here. So I'm going to turn this around and pull very taut on that. And I'm going to put a staple way outside because this is a preliminary staple. I always like to put two or three staples in and then um, check my fit. And then I put staples over here once I'm happy with it and pull those out um, if we need to. So let's turn it over and keep fitting it. Let's go start over here. We want to make sure that we don't staple this because we want to put this foam in here. So we're only trying to staple the back edge to get it in position. That's going to look good, I think. I think I'm going to put it kind of in the middle here. So I'm going to turn it over because I got that pretty nice. And then I'm going to pull the seam so that it's in about the same spot as over here. So I'm going to pull taut until the seam kind of shows up there. There it is. Put a few preliminary staples here. Again, they're deep within the edge so they can be pulled out. Yes. We're going to do the same thing over here. So I have three staples here, 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 and here. And let's inspect it. And th these, these wrinkles are going to come out when we cut slits in this because this is taking an inside turn. This seems good here. This is pulled up too high because it's higher over here. But this is actually pretty good all the way to here. We don't have many, very many staples in it. So here, since this seems too high, all we have to do is pull a little bit more. But there are no staples there. And that's because we have this really tight spot. We have to cut some relief notches in this to get it to go around. Now, I don't want those relief notches to go to the front, but this is going to allow the fabric to start to take this shape. Now, this isn't enough, but I, what I want to do is I want to get this seam at the right spot, and hopefully that's enough to get that seam 
in the right spot and then eventually these wrinkles will come out. So again, I'm, I'm only going to put a couple staples here, maybe two, and then let's see, yeah that seems better. Let's uh, put a, a slit here going no deeper than the front. In order to get more um, slits in this, we're going to take out these three staples that we put in originally with my staple remover. And then I'm going to create a few more slits in this. The more of the more slits you have, I can, I'm not going to do it on my seam, the more it's going to take that turn. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to start to work the vinyl. Let's see if we can get this one down. I'm only going to put one staple in it right now. Work the vinyl, pull. These two staples are going to have to come out because I need to pull the vinyl more this direction. This is not uncommon for an inside turn. I'm going to need another slit probably here. Maybe even go a little bit deeper here. There we go. That's looking better, I think. See, it's starting to come out. Let's go this direction. And if you still have a wrinkle that you don't like, you can remove staples and keep making slits or keep pulling it until they're worked out. Now I'm pretty happy with everything and on an outside turn like this, we have to create a wrinkle. So I'm going to take my preliminary staples out here and try to keep them off your table so you don't hurt your vinyl. And what we have to do is we have to create some wrinkles, but we want those wrinkles to be on the underside. So make sure your seam looks good. It does. We're going to put this, these closer to the edge because I believe I like the way it's, it's looking. So there's a wrinkle. Here's a wrinkle. There's another one, but it's on the back side. And you can see the results. Right there. Gorgeous results. So we're pretty happy with this and we, we left enough space to insert the next piece of foam. So we're going to lift up our fabric and you can see how that fabric pull works pretty well. Isn't that sweet? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put more of our headliner adhesive or foam lock spray adhesive or 3M general trim adhesive. We have all kinds of glues that'll work for this on this so that we can secure this foam to it. And again, I'm not putting it everywhere. I just want to put it in a general spot. And then I want to go over to the foam and spray it on the back side, which is this side. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to position this in place so it's nice and tight up against there. And you do have some working time so don't feel like, oh, it's bonded forever. No, you've got some time. So I'm going to position this and we'll show you what. So I shoved this up here as tight as I could so that it's butted up and I can feel that we've got almost all the gaps closed, which is perfect. Now I'm going to put silk film on and then we'll start pulling the cover over. The silk film is center folded so we un folded this one. The first one we didn't do that because this foam's bigger and I'm just going to shove it in there as best as I can and that the beauty of this stuff is you're not going to feel it so but it's going to make it easier to put the cover on. All right we're going to pull this over to the corner. She's 
starting to look really good. Okay, once you're happy with it, pull it taut. I usually like to start in the center, make sure there's no wrinkles. And I'm gonna put that seam right on the edge. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna really kind of do the same procedure again. I'm gonna pull it taut till the seam's in the right spot. This time I'm not gonna put staples in further. I'm gonna put them close to the edge because I already like, like the appearance, but I am gonna switch over and do it about a foot away at each perimeter. Let's start over here next. We have it in position. This 90 degree turn, um, it's pretty easy to get the, um, the wrinkles on the back side because the fabric has to take that shape. If it weren't, we'd do a special cut, which we have a video on. It shows you how to get around perimeters like that, but you can see the wrinkles going right to the back and not even anywhere on the sides. So we're good here. Okay, we're happy with the look. We're happy with the lack of wrinkles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shore it up. Now on these fabric poles, I'm just gonna pull and put a few more staples in these like that. But around the perimeter, I'm gonna put the staples pretty close and we're pulling on the fabric as we do this, just to make sure that it's nice and taut. So we're gonna do this around the perimeter. We're gonna remove these staples and cut off the excess fabric. So we pulled out the staples that were on the inner perimeter after we got them all around the, the edge, and then we're just gonna cut the excess away like this, close to the edge. Our cushion is now complete. This tutorial is excellent for any type of cushion that has two pieces of foam, typically one higher than the other with a fabric pole in the center between the foam with boxing around the perimeter and when it's stapled onto a backer board. We used a vinyl seating fabric called Eversoft available from Sayorite. There are many colors to choose from. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new Speedboat Makeover Series tutorial videos that are coming soon as we continue to take a speedboat that's old and make it look brand new using upholstery supplies and tools from Sailrite. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.